Toby here. I noticed that there isn't very much information out on the internet about the EOS 150, so I decided to do a, an initial engineering review of that motor. Not really an unboxing, because it's already out of the box, but sort of an unboxing with an engineer's point of view. I've been a mechanical engineer for 15 plus years, um, paramotor pilot for only about six months though, but I am putting together my second paramotor, and I bought this motor for that purpose. I looked at a couple different ones as well, the EOS uh, 100, it, there's a lot of information out, that, out there about that, not very much on the 150. So this is a 2018 model, they have a 2019 uh, version out now which has slightly different heads, the cooling shroud is cut off, um, and there might be some other minor uh, details. I think the coil is changed out. Uh, I don't have that upgrade kit yet, I do plan on getting that. If EOS ever gets back to me on the email. I was able to contact somebody through Facebook. They gave me an email to email. It's been about a week, still haven't heard anything, but hopefully soon I will hear something on that. But let's get started. So this is the EOS 150 as it comes out of the box. It does come with a couple accessories. You get these nice E-props. It's thought together, of course, to come on here. There is also the cover for the prop a big washer or whatnot, uh, and a little uh, insert here that, that helps center it. But it does not come with the bolts to bolt your prop on, which I do find kind of odd. In fact, it, I, I searched throughout the box multiple times, and then I also looked through the instruction manual, and it specifies in the instruction manual those bolts are not included. Now, why they're not included, I don't know. I mean, they give you a prop and the actual washer that goes on, so it's pretty obvious how long they need to be. Um, but for some reason, they're not included and you have to purchase those elsewhere. Uh, it also does come with this round air box thing, which kind of goes on here like this. Mm -hmm. Specifies not to put this towards the prop, so it's put sideways or forwards. And there is a starter pulley pull thing it comes with, and then a throttle which I'll go over this throttle real quickly. This seems to be a trigger type throttle, which I am not used to. I may give it a try, but I'm used to having with a mini plane type throttle where your lower fingers use that, get pull, pull on that. And then your upper fingers are used for the important part, which is to fly the glider. So it does come with that though. And that's, that's some sort of added value though. I'm not sure I will use it. I'm flying I'll probably use it for braking. Um, all right now let's go over the actual motor itself. As you see here this the crankcase is a machined uh, aluminum. Bring the camera down. You can see a lot of the machining marks in there so you can tell that it's clearly machined out of billet or possibly a, a, a casting uh, but fully machined pretty much. There is a it looks like a serial number right here. And then there's some other interesting marks on the side. Let's get white little dots. I don't know if you can see those, but four little dots. And I think that's just to match the, the top and bottom of the crankcase together when they machine them. Some other things to note, big, big wide belt. One interesting thing is they, they, they offer a line drawing to help for mounting this. And in the line drawing, this belt is about half the thickness. Um, it doesn't protrude past this bolt, it kind of comes about here. But on the actual production version, they clearly went with a thicker belt, which is probably a good thing. I mean, this thing has 25 horsepower, which is theoretically the same horsepower as the Monster 185, but it spins at a higher RPM, 9,000 RPM, to get to that horsepower. So it theoretically doesn't have quite the thrust as the Monster. It also weighs, based on the specs, the same as the Top 80, which of course is an 80cc engine, this is a 150cc engine. So that's, that weight savings is quite one of the main reasons I went for this uh, over the, the Moster, or Monster, however you say it. Uh, all right, so let's keep going. The, the carburetor right here is a wall barrel, I believe it's 37. I can't remember the number on it, but it's very similar to the one on the top 80. You got a little priming push button here 
to push, which is kind of silly. They just sort of opened up this hole to make it so you can stick your finger in there. Um, that's, and they specify in the manual, don't push too hard because you can damage something. Well, if you can damage something, maybe they should have put a protector on there. Let's see. Uh, the clutch, let's look at the clutch. So as you see here, the casing here, and they've got this mount to hook up the, the actual drive shaft for the prop. It looks like a, a nicely machined aluminum. One thing you'll see though, it's very, very close here, which makes everything nice and compact and lightweight. Now, if you can look in there, you can see the, these flathead screws right there, which kind of weakens that area. And that is a known weak point. If there's a prop strike, they specify in a, in a special bulletin that you should check that for cracks if there's a prop strike um, and hard landings, I would imagine too. It, it looks definitely strong enough to handle normal uh, flight conditions, but yeah, a prop strike is a whole different uh, uh, amount of force, basically, uh, transferred to the whole system. So I can see that cracking. So that is one thing to look at. Another thing I've seen online is uh, one of these posts getting cracked. I don't know if that was a prop strike or not, but based on the way it's machined, it looks pretty darn strong. In fact, one interesting thing about this is clearly they're going for, for weight savings because every single external feature, you can see here, this is where the screws are going from the instant inside from the outside every single external feature is designed to cut away what is not necessary you can see here there's a boss here probably for the bearing another boss up there for the seal and so that machining of the casting looks very nice and well engineered in that respect now we've got let's take a look on the other side flip this over all right, so here is the pull starter and the mounting plate of the motor. As you can see, machined really well into that mounting plate to kind of lighten it up, still decently thick. And carbon fiber enclosure for the fan, for routing all the air, nice and lightweight. The, this I do find kind of strange. This is the mount for the throttle. It's a single screw mounted in there, so this thing can move a little, can bend a little. I actually had to bend it just to clear some stuff where I'm putting it. Um, but that, not a big deal. There's not a lot of forces on that. And this is the little forces right here. So that's just looks a little odd. Um, starter. So this is an easy starter, they call it. You can see this one already popped out a little bit on me when I've been playing on it. But they added this little black plastic half moon thing with jig here. Uh, it's double stick taped on it looks like but apparently they were having issues or some people were having issues where, the, where the, the cable could get underneath here and get caught up in there so they added this so that's nice it came with that um, there it, it came with these rubber mounts as well and it also if you notice here they have rubber mounts here but they put these nice little safety uh, loops on a fabric and apparently they they really understand that you may need this kind of safety loop and fabric but for some reason did not come with it here or nor does it say in the manual to use a safety loop kind of odd i'm going to put a safety loop on there just because i can uh here's the coil the wires come up to here this looks like a pretty decent wire there's, there's a plug in there i haven't i haven't put the spark plug in i started up yet I just stuff that in there to keep it from flopping around getting in the way when i'm moving this thing now the exhaust system actually looks pretty nice as you see here, there's a big steel sort of spine welded in place here. And of course, this gets a lot of the high temperatures. And I know in some other motors, there's been cracking issues on this. So it's kind of nice to see that is there. Now, I just noticed that. It looks like a little hole. I don't know. Maybe it's not strange. Um, and then over here, welded mounts, welded mounts. Another sort of stiffener right here. And this is all steel and chrome lined. Now, if you look in here, you can actually see the, the mount for where the, uh, the, the bearing is for the drive shaft. And you can see the two screws that clamp it in place. Uh, a little bit of rust on there, but this is, I'm sure, hardened steel. It's hard to get the finish on that. So, and it's nice and, and it's hollowed out, too, for, for weight savings and whatnot. Let's move on. Let's flip it back over. Back to look at these welds. It's 
kind of nice the way they did this. They welded here and then extended the weld out, which should move the stress concentration farther away from that joint, put it out here, gives it a little more strength. And I would imagine these are prone to cracking if you just sort of stop right there. So that little feature is kind of nice. This is aluminum. Some other ones are carbon fiber. This is aluminum. Bolted in pretty nicely with some uh, lock washers right there. Now over on this side, they actually riveted it in these two pieces. And I saw in a, in a bulletin there was a concern of this coming off. Um, and I think they had a safety wire suggestion for the people that didn't have this riveting, but the new ones come with riveted end pieces here so that this can't work its way out and then fall on your prop. One interesting thing, this is a beefy little tip right here. I don't know why that's so beefy. I would imagine this would be the least uh, pressure and temperature since it's the farthest away from the motor. So it shouldn't really need that kind of thickness, but yeah, it has it. And maybe that's just a stock part. So that's, that basically wraps it up. Well, we've got one other thing to look at. These springs, these exhaust springs. And these are actually very well engineered. If you notice, there are sort of the three-piece kind of exhaust spring. There's, a, there's no bend here. It's not one continuous wire. Usually where this bend is, when they make the transition to straight to curved, that's a stress concentration and they're prone to cracking there. This one has a loop sort of embedded inside a coil. And that makes it a much stronger uh, spring, less likely to crack. And all three of them come with that. Uh, alrighty. Well, that pretty much covers it. I do like this motor, and I hope to get it running in the next couple of weeks. Mounted onto a frame that I'm rebuilding, basically. A broken frame, and I need to make some motor mounts to put this on there. It wasn't really designed for this. But that doesn't take too long. So, And... So that's it. If you have any questions about the motor, leave them in the comments. I will try to answer them. Thank you.